Hello and welcome. This is Business Incorporated coming to you live from our legal studio. Thank you for joining us. I'm Chimizi Obi Iwago. On the show today, shares in South Africa's MTN jump 8% on Nigeria's settlement. IMF's Lagarde urges Angola to do more to cut oil dependence. Plus, a look at initiatives that helped Africa tackle its environmental issues in 2018. We'll get the show started now with the markets. And here on the African continent, the Nigerian stock market and the JSC index in South Africa reopened today after the Christmas holiday. The two markets were in the bear territory as at midday Nigerian time. The NSC index was down 0.84%, while the JSC index was down 1.12%. Egypt, on the other hand, was up 1.30%. And in the Middle East, Saudi Arabia and most other major Gulf stock markets rose at intraday, buoyed by the sharp rebound on Wall Street overnight and Brent Oil's recovery from below $50 a barrel. Saudi Arabia's index rose 0.70%, with all 14 petrochemical stocks rising. Saudi basic industries increased 0.4%. The Dubai index was up 0.03%, with developer Emma Properties climbing 2.6%, and Damak Properties increasing 4.1%. Qatar's index rose 0.63%, with the United Development adding 3.1% in heavy trade. Abu Dhabi's index was down. Zero, was up 0.29% with First Abu Dhabi Bank, the largest lender in the United Arab Emirates, dropping 1.0%. Well, in Europe, markets were flat in morning trade after U.S. stocks saw their best performance in almost a decade on Wednesday. Well, let's welcome Orich Bath back after the Christmas holiday. Hello, Orich. A Merry Christmas to you and welcome back after the long holiday. I hope you did enjoy the holiday. Thank you. It's great to be back. Uh, it was a long holiday. I was glad for that and uh, it was great, uh, but it's great to be back as well. <laughs> right. Good to have you back. Well, many global markets are reopened today after the Christmas holiday. Is there a contagion of the U.S. and Japanese markets rebounding European Trading Day? And um, what are the likelihood of sustaining the momentum? Uh, there's not li any likelihood at all in Europe. Um, uh, there's a market uh, or two that are up, but uh, most markets are down. And here in Germany, especially, uh, hard hit. And if you look over my shoulder at the DAX behind me, uh, when I look at it, it reminds me kind of uh, of a ski jumping ramp. That's a, a big television watching sport <laughs> at this time of year. The major tournament, or the major series of competitions is going to get going um, uh, this week. And uh, uh, there it goes down and then whoosh, it goes up. But uh, at the moment, people are not counting on the fact uh, when it goes down like this, 2% at the moment for the DAX, that it's going to go up tomorrow. There's almost zero chance of a of a post-Christmas rally, uh, one trader told me here. Uh, the main bone of contention is having to digest that back and forth in the United States uh, after um, the U.S. President Donald Trump tweeted against the, the Fed, then thinking out loud, can he fire it at all? And the Treasury Secretary weighing in and people wondering whether the Treasury Secretary Mnuchin might be on his way out because of that. And then suddenly some good news coming in as well from the government uh, on the state of the economy, their estimation of that. So people are a little uh, concerned about uh, all this back and forth, especially as the Fed and the U.S. economy play such a great role uh, in the world economy. And uh, that's the main reason uh, why the markets here in Europe are not picking up on that positive contagion in, in Japan. What are the big talking points for your market as the year gradually winds down? I think the big talking point is uh, looking uh, back at the year and, and, and seeing what it means for next year. Um, I talked to a trader here today and he said that it was a funny year, 2018, and he said that in German. He used the word komisches Jahr, and I interpret that not just in, in the literal sense as a funny year, but as an upsetting year. And uh, if you look at the DAX behind me, that's basically uh, also what the DAX did for the year. Uh, because uh, when you look at the all-time high in January, uh, it was over 13,500 points. And now it's uh, 10,400 points in a bit. 
Uh, so that's uh, over 3,000 points that were lost from the high, and that has to be digested. And the problem is the contributors to this insecurity are still all out there. Uh, the questions on rates, the questions on trade, on Brexit, and a number of other issues as well, China, for example. Um, and uh, I think that's what people are chewing on, and they will be chewing on that tomorrow as well as uh, trading winds down here in Europe. All right, give us a sense of this year's Christmas and Boxing Day business and economy in Germany. Christmas uh, shopping was uh, very buoyant. Uh, the retailers uh, who send out a message uh, at uh, Christmas Eve were very pleased with the consumers mm. coming in and shopping. And uh, when you look at uh, their motivation and, 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 and the kind of money they have in their pockets, German consumers are quite in a good way because we have record employment, a record number of people in jobs. Uh, jobs uh, that, that are paying Social Security and jobs that are also seeing healthy income rises, uh, tariff rises uh, by the, by the uh, employers, and uh, they have uh, more money to spend. Uh, so that's good news. But from the point of the retailers, let's say, uh, it's a mixed bag because, yes, the consumers are out there, but there's a heavy, heavy price competition in Germany as well as, I think, worldwide between traditional Main Street shopping mall stores and the online uh, business and that's really creating stiff competition with pressure on prices and margins. Well, thank you very much, Orich. Well, let's um, look forward for a better 2019. Thank you for your time.